Hello YouTube, welcome to my layout. Uh, this video I'm going to go over some DCC programming, some basics and just a few sort of things related to that. I've done a number of videos on this before, so if you're familiar with my channel, some of this might be repetitive and you don't have to watch it, but if my other video was unsatisfactory to you, you're more than welcome to watch this as well. Um, I was aware that a few people weren't quite able to follow what I was doing, which might have been just because I was inexperienced, because I didn't have the camera at the right spot, because it was shaky, or some other reason. So I'm going to try to take care of a few of those things in this video. Um, to the best of my ability. So I guess we'll start here with uh, the basics. DCC programming, as you hopefully know by now, uses decoders on the track and there's sort of different things you can program. Um, and those are done, those programming things are done through what are called configuration values or CVs. So I'm going to sort of slide the camera over here to my, uh, my CV page. Here we go. So as you can see here, um, this is a notebook with CVs on them. Um, so they are configuration values, and for example, CV57 controls something like the lights. You can think of a CV as like a box or something. You, you know, you have a box. It's it, the box number is 57, and inside that box, inside box number 57, contains things. And those things, in this case, are different functions and properties of a function. So CV57 has lights. As you can see here, there's a number 159. Um, I'll explain later, but in this case, we want to program CV57 to a value of 159 to do something to the lights. Um, similarly, CV17 and 18 control the decoder address. So we're going to add numbers into CV17 and into CV18, and as a result, the address will, will be changed. CV29 is a similar thing. It can control the motor, the direction, certain operation properties, and there's basically lots of different CVs that can do things like that. As an example here, we have an intermountain uh, manual sort of operator's guide, as you can see there. And it says here, um, horn and whistle guide, you can change the horn and whistle using CV115. So what that tells you is that CV115 can accept different numbers to change the horn. So the box, in this case, is CV115. The things that go in it are these little numbers here, and as a result, the horn and whistle will change. So for example, you can make it be a K5HL horn by programming a value of 0 into CV115. Similarly, you could have a K3LA by programming 1 into CV115. And there's sort of a code like that. Um, manuals usually have that information. I'm not quite going to get into those details here, um, but uh, that is useful to know. So in order to program CVs, you have to be able to control your locomotive. And the biggest question I always get is how to add locomotive addresses. So uh, we'll get to that, but we're going to start with some simple CVs here. The, uh, the most important CV, I guess, to remember is CV8. Um, that is, if you mess up and you don't have control of your locomotive, it's programmed to a different address or something just went wrong, usually the best place to start is resetting it. And that can be done by programming the CV8, so box 8, to a value of 8. And by doing that, it activates the function reset. So it doesn't change a whistle, it doesn't change that kind of stuff. Well, it could if you've already changed it, but in any case, it resets it to the default setting. And hopefully, you might know that the default for most decoders is an address of 3. So, um, I've already done it, so right now it will respond to an address of 3, so this doesn't uh, really prove much, but I assure you it works. Um, if you don't know the locomotive address, um, what you're going to want to do is either on a programming track, which I haven't really done, um, I prefer to use ops mode on the main track, which I'll show you in a sec, you want to uh, take the other locomotives off and reset it. So I have here Digitrack Zephyr. Uh, there we go, it's going to focus for me. Um, so here, let's say we don't know the locomotive number. It's, let's say we thought it was 58, but that doesn't, uh, that obviously doesn't do anything. So in order to reset that, what we're going to do, we're going to go, I have a Digitrack Zephyr here, uh, the DCS50. Some of you have messaged me with the DCS51. I know there's a few different buttons, but I think uh, this should work. I'm not sure, but uh, it should. Um, so what we're going to do is we have this programming button. On the Zephyr, it's called Ops Mode, so we're going to cycle through by pushing this. Um, several times, there we go, that's ops mode, page, fizz, or whatever, direct, and back to ops mode. So we're going to use ops mode. Um, and then, like I said, we want to program CV8 uh, to a value of 8, which will reset it. So we're going to hit CV, and then we push 0, 8. So we're working with CV8. We're going to hit CV again, and we want to program it to a value of 0, 8. And then we're going to hit this button here, CV, WR, and we're going to push that. And I'm going to slide, see if I can do this. I'm going to push that, and it's going to write a value of 8 to the, the decoder. So I pushed it. And now, 
I'm going to turn exit, turn the power, uh, let's see, select locomotive 3. And as you can see, it's working as normal. And now we have control of the locomotive this way. Oh, of course, the power is not working quite right, but that's okay. So that's how you program a CV. For example, we'll do another one here, um, just in case that didn't make sense. I'm going to mute it for now. Um, so let's see, what do we want to change here? Let's, uh, let's try the horn. So, as it said, it was CV-115. Uh, default, it says, on the ES-44 unit, it's uh, the K5HL. So actually, I'm going to turn this, uh, the sound back on uh, so you can hear the horn. And with that in mind, we're now going to switch to, uh, we're going to program it to a value of two, of one or two to get a different horn. So here, we'll go back here. We're going to program, cycle through, we don't have to do this, but ops mode, there you go. And now we're going to program CV115, because that's what it tells us on here. And then we're going to hit CV again. So I push that again, and let's make it a value of, let's make it one. We're going to get a K3 here. So now we're going to push right. All right. So now we can just hit exit. And we're back on locomotive three. I'm going to turn the sound back on. As you can see, it's still operating. Minus the poor track connections here um, with locomotive three. And now we're going to hit the horn. So hopefully you can tell that's slightly different. Um, let's see. I think I have another example here. Here we have uh, a notice. I'm going to mute that. We have a notice from Intermountain that says, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but the the digit, the ditch lights when you hit the horn. See them blink in there? I hit the horn. It's on mute, so you didn't hear it, but I did hit the horn. And it says that um, setting CV52 and 54 to 128 will make the ditch lights stay on when the horn is activated. So basically that's saying here, you have box 52 and box 54, and we're going to put 128 into both those boxes, and that'll make the lights stay constant. So we're going to come back over here, program, it's in ops mode, CV, we want 52, and we're going to hit CV again, hit it again, and we're going to plug in 128, and then we're going to hit this right button right there. Nice, and then we're going to hit exit, program, CV, the other one was 54, 54, CV, value of 128, I'm going to hit right again. Hit exit. And now we'll flip back to the locomotive here, put the sound on. And the lights should stay solid now when the horn blows. Alright, so that makes sense, hopefully. Um, and there's a ton of different values that you can do that with. Um, consulting your manual or online or something similar to that will help with that. So that's just basically how to program a CV with the, the Zephyr. You push program, you go to the mode you want, and then you hit CV, you type in the, the CV you want, the box, and then you hit CV again, you type in the value, and then you hit this button here, the write button. And the W-R-I-T-E, like writing, like with the paper, you're writing the value to the decoder. And then it works. Um, so now, the next biggest thing that people ask about is how to change the locomotive address. And that um, gets a little bit more complicated. There's, there's easy ways to do it and there's hard ways to do it, but this way works on the main line virtually all the time with all the locomotives, biggest exception being um, MTH HO locomotives. So with that in mind, if you have, for example, an ES44DC, I know one of the people emailing me did, um, this should work, hopefully. Um, and think if you have a DCS 51, it might be. I don't think it'll be different. The, the manual will definitely help with that, but this should uh, this should hopefully work. So, for example, we are currently operating on address three, um, but if you notice there, the cab number is 7519. So we want to make this obviously work with 7519. Now, uh, my other video, I went really into depth with how and why some of this stuff works, but most of you probably don't care about that. So I'm gonna just for to get to it. Basically, there's three CVs that we want to work with here. Um, CV 17, 18, and 29. As I uh, showed you on this notebook here, 17 and 18 kind of control the address, and 29 is sort of motor functions. The other thing that CV 29 controls is whether or not you use a simple address or a long complicated address. Um, so, when we change CV 29, we want to make sure we include that long complicated address. 
So um, what I'm going to show you here is uh, let me pull this up. It's a CV29 calculator. Since for some people um, it's a little bit complicated how to figure stuff out. Uh, here we go. Let's see if this works. Right, I'm going to pick up the camera here a sec to try to show you guys. I apologize if it is shaky, but uh. Okay. Um, as you can see here, this is a CV29 calculator. I'll put a link in the uh, the description below. But if you just Google CV29 calculator, I'm pretty sure this is the first uh, first link to show up. So here, this is CV29, um, and it's important when we program this for reasons difficult to explain. We want to do 17 and 18 first, and then 29. It's not because they're lower numbers. It's just because of the way this works. Um, so. We, uh, we can look at this, and these basically, this helps you determine, this is box, this is CV29. All of this is CV29, so it's kind of like this is the box that you put information into. Um, so here, as you can see, reverse direction, different speed steps, DC operation, rail comm, speed curves, and a few other things. Um, those are the information bits that can go into the box that is CV29, as you can see there. So uh, things were working in the right direction, so we're going to leave this box unchecked. We want 28 or 128 speed steps, um, which you can probably consult a manual for that. But in most cases, you're going to want that on. Uh, DC operation, I just use DCC, so that I don't need. If, I think it probably is best to leave that off unless you know you're going to need it. I, I just have a feeling that, um, and I could be wrong, I could be right, that uh, it might not run quite as well or something might not work as well if you, you leave that on. So unless you're really planning on using it on DC, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, so we don't need that, we don't need rail com, and we don't need a complex speed curve. Uh, we do want a long, long loco address. So as you can see there, it says 34 for the CV. So for CV29, we're going to want to set that to 34, but don't do it yet. Uh, the next one, actually the first two, we should have started with this, although it's lower down on the page, is the locomotive address. So as you can see there, that was long loco address. Um, so down here, we want to set our long loco address. So here, um, most people set it to the cab number, so I want 7519. As hopefully you can see I plugged in there. And I'm just going to hit this Calc CVs button. 7519, and here you can see CV17 is 221 and CV18 is 95. So we're going to plug those in, we're going to program them just like we programmed CV8 and CV57 and all those other ones. Um, and then finally we're going to program CV29 here and then this whole thing should respond to uh, an address of 7519. So let's uh, let's give that a try here. Go back up to the little, little stand we got. Um, and this is important when you program these CVs in ops mode, you want to make sure you have the right locomotive selected. That's why we, we made sure we had control of, of locomotive 3 from the start, because it doesn't work in, in ops mode unless you're programming, uh, you have selected the right locomotive. So we have 3 selected because that's what it responds to. Um, so first we're going to program, um, we're going to go make sure we're in ops mode. So I'm just pushing this little program button, it cycles through all of them. So there's ops mode. The first one we want is CV17, so I'm going to hit CV, we want CV17, hit CV again, and then we want to program it to a value of 221, and then we hit write. Alright, hit escape, program, ops mode, CV18, CV... 95. So we've just programmed CV17 and CV18 to 95. Right now the locomotive still responds to 3, as you can see. And that is because we haven't programmed CV29 yet, which will make the long loco address work. So now we're going to go in, program CV029, hit CV again, and we wanted to program that to a value of 34. Remember that came from up on the computer there. So 0, 3, 4, hit right, and now when we hit escape, this no longer responds to a locomotive address of 3. So here we got full throttle, hitting the horn, hitting the sound, nothing happens. But, and I might have to cycle the power, so bear with me, if we select 7519, and we look at this here, we have full control again. So now we have loco 7519, and we have successfully programmed the address. Now I liked the other horn, so I'm actually going to show you now again once more programming this stuff to hopefully make it a little extra clear. Uh, so once again, we've selected loco 7519, and we know that works because it controls the locomotive. 
And now we're going to program into ops mode. So there's ops mode. CV, the horn was 115. There it is, 115. Hit CV again. And we want to take it back to zero because that's what the K5 was. So zero. And then hit right. Exit out of there. Turn the sound back on. And there you go. That's back to uh, that's back to there. So hopefully this uh, this video here um, was more stable, a little bit more clear. You guys were able to see what buttons I was pushing. I hope. Um, if not, I don't know if there's much else I can do. I have a tripod, but I couldn't find it. I'm actually using a long cardboard box to hold the camera up right now. Um, but that is about uh, all I think I can say about this. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, to send me an email. I'm uh, glad to try to help you out. Um, there are some situations where I found that uh, chips just won't accept certain CVs. There was something wrong with it. I ended up switching the chip out with someone, and, and it worked. So I don't know what to explain with that. But in most cases, um, I found this to work with just about any kind of decoder. Uh, digit tracks, I guess lens, TCS. Uh, this is a Soundtrack Tsunami decoder. I work pretty much mostly with tsunamis, with Soundtracks and Digitracks, but uh, it, it works with other decoders as well, um, except the MTH ones. So, um, if you've been trying to program CVs and you don't really know how to get started, especially if you have a Digitrack Zephyr like I do here, uh, then hopefully this will really have helped you. If you have the DCS-51, which is the most common uh, one that I get from emails now, I think it's a similar process. I showed the buttons this time. So look for something like that. If you're not sure, uh, check your manual. I might even look online to see what I can find out about the manual just to help people with these emails, and maybe I'll throw it in the description. So if you're one of those people, uh, check the description. It probably won't be up until a few days after this video has been posted, but maybe it'll help you out. Um, those of you that have already know how to seen, uh, those of you that already know how to program DCC or have already seen my other videos on this, and this was kind of a waste of time. I'm sorry. Um, I will be working on the layout here in a little bit. I need to get some plaster cloth. I just haven't had a chance to get out and get it. Um, but some of that is coming. I'm also thinking of doing a locomotive maintenance video. Um, since I haven't really maintained my locomotives before, I've done a little bit of research on how to do it, and I might uh, make a video on some of that kind of stuff. So feel free to comment um, things about this video, other videos, or whatever. Um, and I guess that's about it. So, I uh, hope this has helped. Uh, thank you all for watching, and um, I'll try to have more videos up here in the future, but uh, good luck.